So guys, a couple months ago, I got this amazing CO2 laser from Best Cutter. I was doing research for two years. I was renting time on a Trotec machine. Anybody who knows lasers knows that's like a sixty dollars to $80,000 machine. So it was really tough to find something that was gonna fit my budget and also work great and what I was used to. And I found this company, it's been amazing. Customer service has been incredible. And the owner of the company showed me some tricks to get superior accuracy out of your laser. He showed me a trick for aligning the beam, getting the table level, and I wanted to share that with you today because I think YouTube really lacks quality content on how to get the most out of your lasers. So this thing's been a lot of fun. We engraved the Cat's Moses dovetail jig, the new Cat's Moses stop block, uh, We've been doing business cards, making templates. It's been a lot of fun having it. And I wanna get into showing you how I figured out how to get this thing super accurate. I even tried to hire somebody, which was a mistake because it's really easy. So I'm gonna take you through the steps and we'll get this thing super dialed in. So to check beam alignment, you want to essentially just check all your corners are the same height. And that's really easy to do. Uh, you can raise your, your bed up. So to get to your menu, you just hit ZU and you would go to Z move and then left and right are gonna move your bed up and down. So as you can see, there's a very strong stepper motor down here that moves the bed up and down. And when you adjust it, it's very simple. You just need to pull on these and that adjusts the steps and you can raise or lower a different side of the bed. So what we're gonna do now is move our laser head into each corner of the bed and check how high the bed is compared to the laser head and then we can adjust it as necessary. Okay, so I removed my air compressor nozzle and I'm just gonna measure to a very repeatable place on the nozzle head. So that's the bottom of this here. So we're gonna, from this corner, we are right at five and seven eighths ish. So we're gonna go to the back here, check that corner. And we're right at five and seven eighths. Okay, this side we are a little high. So we're gonna lower that. So we're gonna go ahead and push this belt away from us and that's gonna raise it up. And then we'll check it again. There we go. There we go, dead on. Okay, so now we wanna check to make sure that our nozzle is square. So get something you know is flat. And this is a jig I use for engraving the Cat's Moses dovetail jigs. And so I know that's flat. And we're just gonna put it up against our nozzle. And actually, our nozzle is not square. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this screw back here. It's really hard to get to these, but that's okay. You can do it with a pair of pliers if you need to, but it's pretty easy to move this laser head once you loosen one of the screws. So you wanna loosen it and then crank it back down. Then we just are going to adjust it until there's no light between that square and the nozzle. And actually, it's with these LEDs in this machine, it's actually really easy to do. There we go, that is perfectly square. And then we're gonna make sure we go back and tighten that screw really well. One of the cool things about my laser is it came with this toolbox with a bunch of little tools. There's some double stick tape in here and some acrylic. And this is what we're going to use to align our laser. If yours didn't come with it, just get some scrap acrylic. I think this is an eighth inch thick and some double stick tape. It'd be really easy to align it. So let's talk about the mirror controls before we get into it. Okay, so on your nozzle, the controls are this is your x-axis, so this goes this way. This is your y-axis, so this goes front to back. And this is your diagonal axis. And I don't usually use the diagonal. Usually up and down and left and right work great for me. Now let me show you the other mirror. On these mirrors, there's two of them. There's one here and then one closer to the laser tube. This is gonna be your left, right. This is gonna be your up, down. And this is gonna be your diagonal. And the way to think about it is tightening it is gonna push the mirror, loosening it, is gonna let the mirror come towards you. And that's because of these spring screws here. That's what keeps it tight and able to move. So on your up and down, if you twist it clockwise, it's gonna push the mirror down, so that's down. If you loosen it, it's gonna go up. So let's go ahead and attach our acrylic to our first mirror here and show you how to align it. So your first mirror is really easy. You're gonna set your power to 30%. This will last for a few alignments, so I like to start on the edge. And this also kind of helps me figure out where my laser is. I set it in the middle at the very end, just barely covering my mirror. And on this hit, you just kind of want it to be around the center. It doesn't even have to be anywhere close because uh, this mirror is the first one. It's so close to the laser that the next ones are the ones that really matter. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this with 30%. We're just gonna do a quick pulse and see where it is. 
So because we put our mirror in the middle of this and this was close to the far edge, we know that this is just about in the center. And again, not a big deal. Let's move on to the second mirror. On this next mirror, I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. And then on the following mirror, uh, I'm gonna show you what it is when you need to correct it. And there's some nuances in there that you can look for on kind of a micro level that make this super simple. So for this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. We're gonna stick it on there. And one thing I like to do is mark the old one with a Sharpie, just so I know not to look at that one. And then we're gonna fire it as close to the mirror as possible in the middle and then here at the end. And I'm gonna show you what perfect looks like. Okay, so this is what perfect looks like. It's basically perfect. It's not 100%, but it's 99.999999% perfect. So every hit, all three of them have the same center point. They're right in the middle. The last hit you can tell is off by maybe less than a thou, maybe a thou, and that's over three feet. So that is so, so, so little that won't affect anything as far as the end point, but they should all be perfectly within the same circle with the same center point. And you can tell if they get bad, the last hit will sort of have like a ring around it that is lighter than the rest of them because it didn't hit the same spot, it hit fresh acrylic. And that'll start to look like a little oblong. This is definitely exaggerated, but it'll, it'll look oblong and be outside of the center ring of the first two hits or the first one hit. So uh, I'm gonna show you on the next one what it looks like when it's misaligned. So for this one, we're gonna put it on the nozzle. I'm gonna put it in a new area and we're gonna put it in the middle of the Y axis and move the X axis all the way as close to the last mirror as possible. We're gonna do a hit there, a hit in the middle. And when we get to the middle, we're gonna check. Okay, so you can see here that we went right. So we're gonna adjust our left and right screw. So you can see here that we were basically half overlapped. So that means we need to go back left and left is counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go about a quarter-ish turn here. And then we're gonna put a new area of the acrylic on there and do it again. And we're only gonna go halfway until we get perfectly inside each other. And then we're gonna go to the end. Okay, so you can see here now they're within the same circle and I'm gonna to go to the end and see if we have to do any fine adjustment. So as you can see, it's in just the exact same spot and everything is looking perfect. So that one's good and we're gonna move on to doing this mirror and we're gonna change our power to 13%. Okay, on this one, we're gonna use Scotch packing tape and you're gonna to wanna to turn down or off your compressor if you can without turning off your water chiller. So I can turn mine all down back here. And you're just gonna take your, your Scotch clear packing tape and stick it to the bottom of your nozzle and then make a 13% fire. So basically the reason you use packing tape is your nozzle is gonna leave a dirty ring. So you're gonna be able to see where your hole is and I've drawn it with pen. The outside circle is not very good but the inside one is exactly a circle. And you can see that my hit is towards what was closest to me. So we need to adjust our Y axis so that the mirror moves that way, which means we are going to loosen our Y axis knob and then reshoot this. I adjusted it and there's a couple things you notice about this. One, it's right in the middle of the circle. Two, the hit itself is a perfect circle. When you look at this one over here, you can see that it's a little bit oblong because it's at this side of the hole. Also, the other thing you notice is look how much bigger this hole is. In fact, I did it a couple more times. You can see one right above it that's way smaller. And that's because you're dead center in your lens, which means it's way more powerful. It's focused right. So you know when you get this one right is you're gonna be in the middle of your circle. The hit itself is going to be a perfect circle. It won't be oblong at all. And it'll appear bigger because suddenly you're hitting the dead center of that lens and it's super powerful now. You're getting that full 13%. So that's really all there is to it. Let me show you a quick trick on getting things square in your laser. So these machines do have autofocus. I use this a lot of times because it's faster. This just sets the focal length perfectly. It came in the toolbox. So I'm gonna just set that. And again, this is what I was talking about with the laser is see how it's like a perfect uh, fine pin prick here. Uh, we're gonna move it all the way to the left and you'll see it stays basically like that. As it gets a little closer to the first mirror, it'll get a little bit finer, but that's how you know you did your mirror alignment correctly. 
you can see it's just still the perfect size and a nice tight circle and you know you did a good job. Now when it comes to squaring something up in a laser, what I like to do is I take something that I know is straight. So these lines that I put into this jig actually are perfectly straight and they align perfectly with the jig. So I'm gonna put the laser on the line and I'm gonna move it to the right about uh, to here. So you can see it's way off the line. So I'm gonna move this up so that that laser is on the line again. I'm gonna quickly go back to where I was and then back uh, further to the right. So I'm gonna make sure it's still on the line over there. It is. And I'm gonna come all the way to this guy here. And you can see it's off the line just a little bit now. So I'm gonna move it there and keep going to the right to the next indent. So you can see now it's perfectly on the line. And now we know it's square because once you have one axis, you should have the other, but just for giggles, um, I'm gonna change the speed here, turn it down just a little bit so I can get it right on this line right here. So see this line, we're gonna put it right on there and it's now we're gonna go down all the way to here and you'll see that it stays perfectly on that line. And that is how you know that you have something square in your laser. So there's a little bonus tip along with laser alignment. So that's how you do it. I know that uh, laser CNC is in my normal woodworking content, but I am looking forward to integrating this into the shop. It has already been an invaluable tool. It's one been so much fun. Giving out people anodized business cards is like the best. Um, and it's how we're really increasing our capabilities in the international maker station for classes, templates, and also the products I manufacture. It really keeps costs low to do this kind of stuff in house. So uh, thanks for watching. If you don't have a laser, I highly recommend the, the Best Cutter brand. They have everything from uh, you know smaller lasers all the way up to giant fiber lasers. They're, they're phenomenal. I'll, I'll do a comprehensive review here in another month or so when I've had some more time to play with it, but I'm nothing but happy. So uh, guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.